In this last video, um, I'm going to be focusing on uh, some of the outputs uh, for the real road design, uh, which include uh, volume totals, uh, cross sections, and long sections. I'm going to start off with uh, the volume totals, and before I jump into the volume command, I just want to open up the design data form uh, quickly. Uh, when we output the volumes, uh, we might want to include those uh, by specifying compaction factors and a stripping depth. Uh, if you want to, then you need to go into the individual road and then um, and then add uh, either the stripping depth or compaction factors, and you do that over uh, a specified chainage range. So to calculate the volumes, we simply select on the volume command and uh, we've only got the one uh, road object in this project, uh, Princess Highway and uh, by default the software will report the sectional uh, volume so at each chainage range, uh, at each chainage we can see the cut area, uh, cut volume, fill area and fill volume. Uh, there's also a pavement volume and cumulative total in the last column so we can see that uh, um, you know, we're in a lot of cut on this particular project. Uh, down the bottom are some totals, total cut, total fill. Um, now just on the the earthworks, um, if I open up the vertical grading editor here, um, we could uh, potentially run a, a balance. And this will because I have a, uh, a, a certain part of my design linked to a table drain string. Uh, I might not be able to do a perfect balance, but by using this uh, balance option we can set the required volume. We can do this over a chainage range and the software will balance the earthworks to that volume I, I uh, specify here. So uh, it's calculated it. If I run a regen, <coughs> there we go, we can see we've, we've uh, balanced the earthworks out by, by lifting up the design and now I'm getting you know cut and fill that, that equal each other. So. Uh, just so you know that uh, that command there is available and is quite useful. In regards to this sectional report, I can, um, well let's start with this button here. What this allows me to do is turn on some extra information that, that I might want to see. Um, levels at the existing and uh, design uh, center line, uh, the strip depth, the cut and fill factors applied. Uh, so these are extra columns that can be turned on. The first button relates to some calculation settings. So we can do things like uh, set constraints for the uh, or limits for the volume calculations. Maybe I don't want to include the batters, so I could um, tell the software to only trim between the you know the, the uh, edge bitumen or the table drains. Um, and it's, you could use an alignment as well to, to set up those limits. If there was an alternate surface you wanted to calculate the volumes to, you could also specify that there as well. So um, a, a couple of settings in relation to the, the volume calculations. If I click on subgrade by section, um, at each section the software will report the uh, a breakdown of the material, how the materials were calculated. Um, and then I can actually see in this table here um, uh, the different material totals for each uh, uh, section of my design. So you know, asphalt between the centre line and the left edge of bitumen, and, you know, asphalt between the centre line and the REB, etc. If I want comp total uh, material totals, and I click on the material totals option at the end, and then I can see down here total asphalt. Uh, crush Rock Class 2 and Crush Rock Class 3. Any of the tables you see can be outputted as an AutoCAD table or outputted to a CSV file. So by running this command I can output some tables in the drawing um, displaying that, uh, that information. So that's the, the volume uh, report uh, outputs. The next thing I wanted to do is output some cross sections and long sections. Now uh, let's start with cross sections. I'm going to select the cross section plots command and pick on Princess Highway. Now this dialog box that comes up 
uh, initially allows me to tell the software what sections are going to be included in the cross-section plot. Now this particular option uh, I suppose has become obsolete now uh, with the new cross-section engine so I'm not actually going to use it I'm, I'm going to go straight to the selected sampled sections list. Now if you open up uh, this particular drawing, uh, you might find that the CSD layers haven't been set up. And I've got some really ugly colours picked there. Um, if you type in CSD lay in the command line, the software will create some layers for us um, and display uh, the design on a blue uh, with a blue line type, the existing with a green line type, etc. It uh, just looks a bit nicer. Perhaps on your template you, you might want to run uh, the same thing. So at the moment I'm displaying uh, very much an urban uh, style. So what I'm going to do is click on load and I'm going to select on a style that we have that installs with the software. Uh, it's called Legacy Format Rural. And if I open up that you can see that we're now displaying uh, a traditional rural format cross-section and that way I can uh, uh, output a whole bunch of cross-sections on the one sheet. One of the great things about civil site design is if I was to go and make a change to the verticals so I'm just going to lower part of the road here these cross-sections update. So as you change your design, the cross-sections uh, will update. If I click on local update, then I could tell the software, every time I close down the vertical grading editor, reproduce the cross-sections for me. Um, and if I set that as global, then for all future projects, that, that setting will be applied. So I spoke quickly about the uh, being able to tell the software what sections you, you actually want to output it. Uh, in the new cross-section engine we have this uh, change list option so I can quickly change between cross-sections displayed at say 10 meter interval or cross-sections displayed at say a, a 30 or a 50. What I'm going to do is add a new change list. This dialog box will load up and by hitting the green plus I can name it, so I'm going to call this one Andrew's, uh, we'll say 30 meter. So I'm going to tell the software that 30 meters along the straights and 15 meter spacings along the arc, so I want to output sections. You can do things like, say, if the arc is uh, uh, under a certain length, we might want to use um, quarter points or something like that. Uh, if I have spiral uh, curves and I can set a spacing for those as well and I could apply this over a, a change range but I've applied it to the whole length. In the extras tab I can tell the software uh, or specify any other extra cross sections I want outputted. The horizontal tab allows me to pick and choose what horizontal geometry points will be included. Uh, vertical does the same but for vertical geometry and super allows me to pick uh, what super elevation uh, points I want shown. All of those I want ticked on. I'm going to uh, save that list and close and exit. So at the moment I'm just displaying at a, a very standard 10 meters I think but I'm going to change to Andrew's 30 meter so I'm now displaying at 30 meter intervals but, but certain horizontal and vertical geometry points have been ticked on. By clicking on plot to layout the software has uh, produced those cross sections for me. Now long sections work in a very similar way. If I click on long section, uh, pick on the road, long sections will make use of this selected sections list. We haven't um, uh, s rolled out that change list across all parts of the software yet but we are planning on doing so. So it's using this interface I would pick and choose what long uh, what sections I want included in the output. I'm just going to use that uh, list. The initial style looks pretty ugly black and white so I'm going to load a 
styling uh, at a 500 by 100 scale but what I'm going to do is just add a, a few extra information to the bands here so at the moment I've got the design levels the existing and the chainage I might want to add um, say the horizontal geometry band the super elevation maybe cut and fills at the center line so I do that by selecting setup row data and I simply add uh, the band I want by selecting on uh, one of the buttons here so if I wanted horizontal geometry I click on that select OK um, cut and fill depths uh, I want the cut and fill depths at the center line I could report them at a particular code or offset um, I want a banding to show the super elevation as well I might also add a banding to report the table drain design so I do that by selecting on vertical grading and I'm going to tell the software to report the design at the table drain. I don't want to show the VC in grades, that's uh, these light uh, arrows and grades you see on the long section. I'm going to rename the band table drain design and I'm going to pick another layer that this goes on. This layer I think will display it purple so I'll click OK to that. So I've added these bands in uh, to the list, but what I need to do now is reorder them. Now, top to bottom is bottom to top, which means whatever is down the bottom here will display on the top of the long section. So I'm going to move cut and fill depths to the top. Um, then I <coughs> might have the design and the existing, and then the table drain, and then I'll have the horizontal geometry the super elevation and the changes. So by clicking on apply and exit, update display, you can see I've added um, those extra bands to the table there. The purple line being the, the table drain and the blue being my design. Once I'm happy with the plot, I just select on plot to layout and uh, the software on output will display the plan view up the top uh, for you which I've all, always liked. So uh, there we go we've got uh, some cross sections out of the for the rural design uh, and some long sections as well. Um, we do have a video online on how to add your own title block it's really just a matter of going to the general tab and using this edit title block settings command um, you just need to make sure that your title block is added to the settings folder uh, but refer to that video online for that. So uh, th thank you for watching uh, this video series on uh, Real Road Design. If you do have any questions, you can contact me. Uh, my email address is andrew.banson at civilsurveysolutions.com.au <clears throat> Via the welcome screen, um, you can also uh, access uh, our blog uh, for example, <clears throat> our uh, YouTube page, and if you want to submit a, a technical uh, support request, then there is this uh, link to our technical support system as well, uh, which allows you to uh, also upload uh, your project. So uh, thank you very, very much for watching.